Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. I have a strange feeling that someone's staring at my face right now. Sorry, God, forgot we had a countdown and everything. Okay. Uh, we're back with uh, John Barrier Wilson. How That's are it. you? Good, good. Got a good bit of lunch here since I'm on Central Time Zone, so I'm good to go. Oh, you had lunch already? Uh, lunch already. I haven't had lunch. Yesterday, I didn't eat anything. It was terrible. That sounds miserable. It was miserable. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist at Adobe, and uh, joined by John, as I already mentioned. And day three of the Adobe Live UI and UX week, you just finished watching Melody and Erica. John and myself are here. And then right after that, Melody's back with Camille. So we got some great stuff coming up. Uh, we also got Chat and Win in about half an hour. You're going to see a countdown in about 15 minutes leading up to chat and win. You'll be able to win some stickers and all that fun stuff. And then at the end of today's stream, we have portfolio reviews. So we're going to head to That'll space. Be fun. We're going to grab our space helmets, head up there and take a look at some portfolio. So make sure to hit that portfolio review tab. I think it's up that way. Uh, submit your portfolio and two of you will have your portfolios reviewed by us. Cool. We're going to tear you to shreds. Oh, I don't like that. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> we'll Sorry. be nice. We'll be super nice. But a big hello to everyone who's joining us in chat, including Anna and Holly and Jason. And if you are joining us, let us know where you're tuning in from. We've also got Omar and Nathaniel, who I believe from this morning is from Connecticut. And uh, Gus Bot's in the house, Paco's in the house over here. Tim, one of our awesome moderators. A lot of good people, let us know. And if you have questions throughout this entire stream, we're here for two hours. Definitely throw them in the chat. I will do my best to ask John all your magical questions. So, Fun. should we get going? Let's do it. All right, tell the good folks a little bit about yourself, what you do, what mm -hmm. you did Monday or Tuesday and Wednesday, and then what you're planning on doing today. Sure, yeah. So, my name is John Barry Wilson. Mm -hmm. Let's do that for the third time. It's a good start. Saturday. <laughs> and uh, I'm a UX UI designer and do a bit of front end as well, development. And I'm and currently doing freelance stuff, so just kind of help people out here and there. So that's my what I do, do outside of Adobe Live nice. today. So uh, Monday we spent some time just doing a basic website, and I like to do. Uh, or this week I've done kind of some challenges. So we've had uh, a website that was pretty bland in the visuals to kind of spice it up a little bit. Yeah. Yesterday was a woodworking app called Balsa. That was not fun. Salsa. I like salsa better. I should rename it to salsa. Yeah. Just for fun. Uh, and we wanted to add a bit of additional features. So it's kind of like an MVP thing. Mm -hmm. So those are worth checking out for sure. And today, I have an app called Tracker. Uh, it kind of looks like FedEx, but you know, it's a play. It's a little spoof on it. Nice. Tracker. So um, basically, <clears throat> what I wanted to do today was present this business level software application and try to start creating some design systems out of it. Since okay. we know design systems Ooh, are kind design of hot systems, things yeah. right now. So having done a lot of front end development, that's super helpful in working with design systems because mm. you know how it can translate to code pretty yeah. well. Speaking of design systems, did you see the sneak not too long ago from Andrew and Talon? They were sitting at this very desk and they demoed fully linked assets in XD. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I can't wait for that. So yeah. right now, for those of you who don't know, you can link symbols between documents within XD. Right, But in a future update, possibly not in the far distant future, you'll be able to link entire libraries. So if you have a, one document, XD document, with your design system, with colors and character styles and symbols and whatever it might be, you can basically just load in that entire document to a new XD document. It can even be in the cloud if you wanted to. So cool. Um, and that way, the, the owner of that file can keep all your colors, character styles, and symbols up to date across who knows how many documents. That'd be awesome. I can't wait for that. That's going to be fun. That'll be super helpful. I actually played with it. It's good. Cool. Yeah. yeah you know a lot of things. I know lots you? of things. Uh, I showed you some things good. earlier. I know. Mm. <laughs> good stuff coming. Yeah. Cool. So I uh, just kind of wanted to hop in here. I got a, a checklist of things, just like yesterday, of what I'd like to do. Right. You've seen do you that overview. Do you do a checklist? I love checklists. Mm. I work on lists. What do you use for your checklist? To doist. Todoist. Yes. Okay. I was using things for a while, but I love that Zapier connects to Todoist. Oh. So you can really automate a ton of stuff and make it cool. There you go. Yeah, it's full of fancy junk. <laughs> but anyway, this app, uh, like I said, it's tracker. It's similar to kind of like a FedEx thing, but it's orders, shipments, and upcoming. <coughs> kind of like a uh, shipment tracker of sorts for an e-commerce site or something. Okay. Um, so we currently have just one screen. So we're going to need to create a bit of symbols to start using in other screens and use those probably in the assets so that we can continue to tweak those. 
and then we'll uh, probably add additional like, kind of some dashboard elements. Yeah. So I think that would be fun. Nice. Cool. Sounds good. So for a warm up here, let's just do a warm up. Uh, I have a repeating table, a repeating grid of these elements, and kind of just populated these with a, a text file so that it creates random names and IDs and stuff. But what I'd like to have happen is um, once you click on one of these items, you could actually go to like pull over a slide over or an overlay or something mm -hmm. and have the details, more details than just this. So we kind of want to hint to the user that that's possible. So we'll go into this first one and we'll just kind of create a little arrow over here. Look at that fanciness. And it's so fun to be able to do this with little repeating grids and things. So we'll do that for now. Let's fit the style that we have going on. I already have a couple of colors in the assets over here. Mm -hmm. We'll use light gray for now. And then looks like we have a little bit of space cut off there. We'll come back to that. Anyway, um, we're gonna need a little arrow. Let's just add a little chevron is what I like to call them. Mm -hmm. Make this a little smaller. Devin says, let the to-do tracker app debate begin. To <laughs> I know Devin. Uh, Devin's a good friend of mine. He oh, uses okay. things a lot. Oh. We, were both, we both loved things, um, but recently kind of swapped over to Todoist. What brought you over to Todoist? Like I said, the Zapier stuff. Oh, right, uh, yeah. okay. Um, Howard, you should remember. Sorry. Um, I haven't been listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, no big deal. Um, yeah, then we got the arrow, but I use I like to use Zapier so that I can automate some stuff. So anyway, so now we have a little arrow there. It can kind of hint to someone that they should click. I'm not sure if that color is good. We can try a couple different colors just to see if we like something additional. So we'll try this maybe. Yeah, we'll go back to the other one just for now. Yeah, it's subtle. Subtle. So there we go. We have a. Uh, very quickly, being able to add an arrow to all of them. Yeah, Devin's cool. calling you a trader, by the way. Oh, thanks, Devin. On on live stream for Devi. Live in front of millions of people. <laughs> so let's create some additional symbols that we can start using elsewhere. Um, this is this create order. I, I kind of create uh, had this set up so that we can make an improvement here. Create order. You're not really sure if it's clickable or not. It kind of looks just like a text with an icon. Yeah. So we're going to make that into a nice little button, and then we'll turn that into a symbol here. Mm. So let's go ahead and add a little box around it. And Chris is right. I am dreaming of XD19. Mm. Mm. I think I actually did dream about it last night. Did you? I think so. Mm. You know, it's kind of hard to recall dreams sometimes. Yeah. That's the effect we have on people. We show you some stuff, and then you just can't get it out of your head. Mm. That's a. That should be a marketing technique. Yeah. Really. All right, so now that those colors were orange before, we're gonna want to change them to white. We'll do that icon as well. Oop, the wrong layer selected. Oh, it was not changing that. There we go. So now we have a basic button. Love it. It's a great looking button. Very simple. Yeah. Simple works. So we'll make that into a symbol, Command K. And there we go. We'll just rename that to We'll name it to large button. Large button, okay. Because we might need to make a smaller button later. Yeah. And you will probably have to go into your assets panel and rename it there as well, because you changed it in your layers panel. Oh, there you go. Because you can override that, yeah. We'll Speaking of overrides, button. I'm getting excited for XD19. Mm, <clears throat> yep. That's a hint. Symbol override, symbol resizing. That could be really helpful today, but it could be. We'll have to wait. Yeah, not too long though. Not too long. We're on XD seventeen. We release new updates every month, so doing some math, you know, May, maybe, maybe, maybe. We'll see. Uh, I actually got an update this morning, which was good. Oh yeah, but we there's you know bug fixes and all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy when seeing updates just to know that there's people behind it. Oh, doing yeah. awesome work. <clears throat> so I'm thinking ahead here. We don't know if we need to actually have an icon because when we use this, we don't want to hide them across all the symbols at this right. point. So I might just get rid of that just for this mock-up's sake. Yeah. 
and then we'll just leave it as a normal button there. You won't have to worry about that soon. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep reminding you that better things are coming. I was gonna tell you yesterday, you asked what I thought was coming, and I was, I tried to be pretty content with what's happening mm -hmm. and what we have, but your hints are kind of making me a little itchy for an update. Andrew does a good job at his, some of his hints. Where is Andrew? For those who, uh, who missed the stream yesterday, I'm gonna hop over to my screen for cool. a second and just show you some stuff. Here, here's Andrew Shorten's Twitter account. If you're not following Andrew Shorten, um, there's his handle right there, A Shorten. And uh, let me make sure I don't have anything. Okay. Um, yeah, so he's been teasing and doing some cryptic tweets on some of the things that are coming in XD19. This one's not so cryptic, right? It says symbols. We've already, Talon mm -hmm. and Andrew have already shown some of what's possible with the symbols update. I've been, I showed you some stuff yes. earlier. Yeah. It's bonkers. Um, <laughs> then there's this one. This one's interesting. All I can, I can't get past the GIF. Where's the any key? That's yeah. all I can see. But we're bringing any key to Adobe XD. That's, that's the, there you go. There you go. That's perfect. No. That's all we need. But it, 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 if you read into it, you might be able to come up with something. Mm. Then there's this one. And there's a chance that these two can be related. Oh. 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 Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. And I think there was one more. <clears throat> 19 is the new 18. Yep. So hmm. take from that what you will. And I can I can definitely say that these are just a few of the features coming in XD19. It's gonna be a big update. So Deadpool and any key. Yes, so we're getting up, Deadpool right? and any key. Okay. Okay. Done. I'm yep. sold. Me too. <laughs> so we have a button here and we can reuse that as well, which will be super helpful. Um, something that we kind of want to get prepared as well is an input, a basic input. Similar to this large button, I'm not sure if we're going to want a search icon everywhere. So let's just go ahead and make a standard input here. Hide that icon or get rid of it. And now we have a, a like additional placeholder kind of a thing. And we'll just transit or you know convert that into a standard input. It'll stay over here in the input, I mean the symbols as well if I get rid of it here, right? Yep. No. Yeah, it does. There you go. Yeah. Very cool. Now you can so, have symbols just in your assets panel and not anywhere else on your document. That's good to know. So we're got, now we have an input and a basic button. So now we kind of have a few symbols that we can start working with. And you can see I also have uh, some colors over there. So let me get back to my checklist here. We got input, large button, and text styles. Some text styles will help. Basically all we're doing here is just kind of populating the assets panel. Right. And you typically, you start populating your assets panel and creating a design system before you start working or as you're working, after you're working? Uh, I usually try to uh, kind of get through the art direction first okay, and set up that art direction. And then once I've com committed to one screen, have a good feel for it, then I'll start adding some other kind of symbols and character styles just so I can start using those on other screens mm. more quickly. So we have basically a main label <coughs> and you can see that the main label would work there as well. Yep. Um, and then we'll get into like a secondary label. Secondary label. We'll add that placeholder as well, because we might need to use that. Um, it can, I have to kind of hold myself back sometimes because I might just go crazy and add tons of things here. I know, you can like select your entire artboard and add everything. That, that would be kind of crazy, because especially if you have you know text styles you're probably not right. gonna reuse on other places. Right. But you can do it. So that's what we'll do for now. Um, I think that should give us enough. Again, trying to plan out here. And my phone keeps locking. Let's go to multiple dashboard sections. So one more thing that I kind of want to do before we start creating some additional screens here yep. is add a bit of dashboard, kind of a quick reference for what's going on. And generally what we see in specific like material design, kind of a Google layout type mm -hmm. thing is kind of this header area with a color behind it. So we're just going to kind of copy that a little bit. Mm, Nikki's asking, rulers, where are rulers and guides in XD? I don't know. They might be coming. Oh, more hints. Well, I mean, it, it's it's bound to happen at some point. Yes. I can't say when, but you know, eventually. 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 
Actually, a, a question for you. Yes. Do you typically, so there's there's a difference between rulers and guides, right? Guides you yes. just pull out from the side at the top and rulers actually have dimensions and uh, sure. measurements and things like that. Do yeah. you find yourself using rulers, like the actual dimensions and things like that or that measurements? No. No, I don't either. I have, I mean, I remember accidentally toggling it on so many times in Photoshop. Yeah. And never use them. Yeah, and let me know in the chat because I found myself, obviously Photoshop has rulers and guides, and I don't think I've ever looked at the ruler. I just drag out a guide and put it in place, but I don't really use the ruler, so mm -hmm. I don't know. It's an interesting debate, because I've heard a lot of people say, who needs rulers, we just need guides. But then some people say, I swear by rulers. That's true. One of the things that I love to do, really, especially, I mentioned this the other day, with something like CSS Grid, which is coming out, is that something like a basic square grid makes a whole bunch of new possibilities. Oh yeah. New ways to think and things and getting some more traditional magazine layout type things. Yep. So I'm thinking here through this dashboard section, it might be nice to see how much uh, money we brought in through orders. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll kind of do that. Let's see, I, I think I had a, yeah. So I was gonna use orders, shipments, and upcoming. I wasn't super happy with this when I was preparing this, so I'm gonna kind of rework this. Yeah, go for it. We have the number of orders, number of shipments, and number of upcoming. So you kind of see each of these sections mm -hmm. right there. So I like to do a little bit of math here. I have 40 pixels between everything here, and I know I'm gonna need two spaces of 40. So I could subtract 80 from this width, and then I'll divide that by three. Oh. So there we go, now we have this. We have another one, which we could use a repeat grid here, but I'm very particular sometimes. So now we have evenly spaced three little sections there. Mm -hmm. So now that we have those text styles, we can actually go in here. I have, you know, an hour and a half at least to fill here, and I'm probably gonna get through it pretty quickly because of these assets here. So now we have orders. We'll put that there for now. And then we're gonna have shipments and upcoming. Oop. All right. Spelling's hard when you're designing live. Oh yeah. And I'm not good at it either. Yep. <laughs> so I wanna reference this again and see what else we have. We have numbers this week, last year, or last week and last year. Okay. So let's add, I'm just trying to think through how a good layout would be here. Let's just add some big text. We're gonna make it a bit lighter. Now, when I'm working with fonts here, you'll see that I'm using San Francisco, which mm, is Apple's. It's nice. I like a nice font. thin font. Yes, and uh, something that is worth knowing for web apps specifically is you can set your font base to be the, the system default in CSS. Oh, okay. So that significantly speeds up the performance and loading of a page. Interesting. So if you start using something like San Francisco for uh, Mac computers, and I think uh, Ubuntu has one mm -hmm. for Linux stuff, and various fonts, you can actually um, you know, kind of get ahead of the developer and make sure that you're creating something that is very fast there. Right. So we're gonna add a bit of color there to make that number really stand out. For those just joining, um, like Bernadette, who's asking, uh, what what's the project today? John's yeah. designing, as Tim just mentioned, a tracking service uh, application for the web. Yes. Desktop. Yes. No. Web. 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 Like Spider Man. No, not like Spider Man. So I went ahead and grouped this again, just keeping up with layer organization, and we'll call this one the orders panel. We got a label and then we have a value, mm. and then we have the container around it. So that's very, very basic, obviously, and we're gonna need some more detail in here. So previously I had used kind of this horizontal stack type of thing. Uh, felt a bit weird to me, so let's go ahead and make something a bit more, uh, ooh, don't wanna delete the whole thing. I'm gonna make something a bit more vertically mm. oriented. Okay. So what do we have? We have today, and how many today's do we have? 
Today is 58, last week was 43. I'll tell you what, we'll just do this. We'll copy and paste. So what about that version was not working for you? I just didn't like the way it felt, really. Okay. Um, it's, you can see that the, usually when I'm designing something, I call it a cell. That's what the inner limiting width of that content is. Right. So uh, the cell was kind of, it created some white space on the edges, and it didn't feel balanced to me, in a way, vertically. That's fair. So, you know, just exploring some other options just yeah. to make sure that I'm completely happy with whatever I end up with. That is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> there we go. That's all I needed right there. Just for quick reference. As designers, we're very familiar with creating lots of options. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, can, it can be many, many options before you get to the final product. And this year. So that is a little big to stretch across the whole thing. So let's see what secondary label looks like. I think that's a bit better. So we'll go over to the color. We'll make this one black. Just kind of make these labels stand out a little bit from the actual values that we see. Yep. <clears throat> so I like it a little bit. I think adding some more space would help. We might be able to get into a bit more unique style as well if we wanted to kind of you know, get into a different layout, maybe. And you're also using the San Francisco font for the smaller text below? Yeah, okay. I'm actually using it for pretty much everything. You've got San Francisco Pro Text. Nice. And then there's Pro Display, which when you're doing uh, mock-ups, it's helpful to have those two different fonts. But you'll want to keep in mind that you'll end up with just one font for yeah, totally. the browser. So, And for those unfamiliar with the San Francisco font, that's Apple's font that they created yes. um, for iOS. You can also use it for web. Uh, if, and if you Google it, you can find it. You can also grab it uh, if you're downloading the UI kit, the iOS UI yes. kit under File, Get UI Kits, and then iOS. It, I believe it does ship in that as well. I could be wrong, but I think it does. I think I still had the file from yesterday. Nope, got rid of it. Oh. John was about to prove me wrong. <laughs> I was about to, I was trying to try to prove you right. Oh. So. I kind of like that. It feels a bit more unique. Gives it a bit more space. Um, maybe we can balance it out a little bit later. Tim is back with his dad jokes. Oh, why, I'm ready. Why do UX designers like forks? They're great stakeholders. Keep them coming. I love it. Oh, Tim. <laughs> so now we're running out of space for an actual button, right? So maybe we just need to pull in the button to kind of rethink this layout. Yeah. Again, usually I, I create wireframes and that helps a lot. Just kind of figure out the, the layout of things. Mm -hmm. But you also have to keep in mind that layout uh, wireframes don't, you know, kind of pin you into a corner. You can still move things around if you want to. Of course. So we'll just place this in there for now. Large button. Kind of tweak in here. Let's hide this for now. Maybe we'll come back to that. So this is why we need like algorithms. Just press a button and it'll just just design make for it for us. Yeah. I don't know where this button should go. Where should it? Where should it go? Adobe Sensei, and it just does it. That'd be cool. Or Deadpool, like we saw earlier. Deadpool. Maybe that's what's coming. <laughs> Deadpool's gonna, guy. It's a new Clippy. Yes, I was about to say yeah. the same Deadpool's thing. Deadpool's going to pop up and just, <laughs> hey, it looks yeah. like you need some help. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see here. Yeah, we hired Ryan Reynolds to do all the voices in Adobe XD. Oh, that would be yeah. great. So uh, maybe the big button mm. isn't working. Let's yeah. kind of clean it up here a bit. And then when, Again, that's a little too big for this area here, so we'll make it like this. And we'll call this a full width button. Let me add a container text, and then we will make this button full width. I think that's the naming convention I had, did I? Nope, large button. So we'll rename that to full width button, like that. Now we have the create order. I think that feels a little better. Kind of gives yeah, some space. It's definitely filling out that box a little bit more. Yeah. 
I really like having everything centered, but now we don't have space for the right. extra data. You got some extra stuff you got to put in there. Yeah. So let's just see what this looks like. Maybe, maybe we go back to where we were. I kind of call this like a Nike layout. If you go look at Nike stuff, they have some really great design that oh, is they? pretty unique. I haven't looked in a while. Um, so we'll, call, we'll just bring that down a little bit. Let's go with that. I kind of like it. Sure. I know it's different, but maybe we can make something of it. So here is the data. So we got label, value, here's the border. I call this a rule. Get rid of that since it's hidden. I'll tell you what we'll do to make this a bit easier. We're gonna create, duplicate that a few times and we're gonna clean up some of this. We're gonna call this one this week. Mm -hmm. We'll do last week. Data last week. Oh, and then we'll make this one this year. And this way we have three different elements that we can actually work with. Got it. Instead of the group. We can pull that over here. Yeah, it makes it much easier to align yes. and distribute. Yes, absolutely. So we'll just do that and we'll space them out. I think that's working. I like it. Yeah. Hey, Ed, welcome. Hey, for Ed. anyone who's just joining, uh, if you have questions for John about designing or freelancing, life maybe, definitely ask him. Me, as being dads, we need other dads sometimes. Yeah, we do. So, dad questions too. Or dad jokes. Mm. Those are good. Those are good. Metadata, that's what we'll say that is. Then we got the full width button. Looks like we're pretty organized there. Uh, we'll do that for now. We'll come back to it if we want, if we have time and want to tweak it some more. I definitely like the way it feels better. I do too, it looks looking good. So let's space these out. And not to keep talking about uh, unreleased features, but oh, soon you'll be able to, this will all be one symbol. You can just have and override things and change text and move things around. Be a good time. Just not now. Not, not now, but that's okay. It's hard to disappoint. I heard there's a good phrase that maturity is delayed gratification. Absolutely. So that's good. This is gonna be shipments, so we'll reorganize this shipments. Oops, not command enter. Bernadette's asking if you're a front end developer too. I am a front end developer. Um, I kind of got into <clears throat> UI UX and front end at the same time, and it was a good thing to kind of balance those out. I think we said on Monday that you don't necessarily have to know how to code, mm -hmm. um, but knowing your the canvas that you can work in is super helpful. Absolutely, so. I found that too. I don't know, like I, I know enough. I've, I've definitely coded my own website and done a bunch mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. JavaScript stuff, but just knowing a little bit of what's possible on the development side mm -hmm. has helped me a ton in designing because the last thing I want to do is come up with this incredibly fancy prototype send it to my developers, and then they just look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, right. So we'll say we have a few, a bit fewer upcoming. Now, again, it'd be great to be able to override these symbols, but I think we're not gonna be able to do that right now. Oh, nope, we, in a we different can't space. do that right now, because we have chat and win. Hey! So we're gonna take a very quick break, and when we come back, let us know, what should we ask them? <clears throat> What's your favorite dad joke? Sure, what's your favorite dad joke? Leave that in the chat and one of you will win 100 stickers from Sticker Mule. So we will be right back. And we're back and John's staring at my face again. So let us know in the chat what your favorite dad joke is or just type something in there, what your favorite food is, whatever it might be. And then in a minute or so, the magical algorithms that be at Adobe Ooh. will choose a winner. It'll appear right here. And that person will win 100 stickers from Sticker Mule. So we got, Felix says, what did the zero say to the eight? Nice belt. Nice. Squeezes them in. Oh, 
I get it. Yep, mm. that's a good one. Okay. Make like a tree and leaf. That's always a good one. How many apples grow on a tree? All of them. <laughs> that's like one of those anti-jokes. <laughs> hey, I got a good one. Do you know why um, submarine scuba divers fall backwards? No. Because if they fell backwards, uh, forwards, they'd go into the boat instead of the water. Oh. It's helpful. Just, just so you know. <laughs> Very good. What did the buffalo say to his son when he left for college? Bison. My son. Bison. Chris. Chris Diaz. Chris. Did he even leave a dad joke? Where is he? Where are you, Chris? Show yourself. I don't see him. <laughs> He's in there somewhere. He obviously He's chatted. Like, yes. But Chris just won 100 stickers from StickerMule.com. Someone from Behance will get in touch with you very shortly. And if you did not win, you can go to StickerMule.com slash Adobe Live 19. You get 10 stickers for a dollar. Yeah. Oh, my hands cut off. There's no hands That's for okay. you. Cool. We're back yeah. at it. All right. So I was going to get to this button here. I was going to say that it'd be nice to have a different color for this area here. So I'm going to use that purple maybe or black. Mm, let's see what purple looks like. And we'll have to ungroup this one so that we can actually change that color. There's Chris. Boop, boop. Yes. Way to go. I expect you to make 100 stickers that all say boop. <laughs> so I, I really like that these are different colors. I think orders probably more significant because that's when you're actually getting the money mm -hmm. is when someone orders. So we'll right. keep that one as orange. We'll keep shipment as kind of this, this a bit duller purple in comparison to the orange. And then let's just make this. This is going to be the upcoming. So these are kind of still like pending orders or something if you have a big business that is has salespeople that are dealing with this. So we'll make that kind of a gray. And gray buttons tend to look disabled. So we're right. gonna make this one just a basic. Oh, I forgot that we had a symbol there. Let's go back and move that. Soon, John. I, I, I can't wait. <laughs> I know. So let's make that one white. Yeah, Chris, we should have a design challenge to create boop stickers. Ooh. Yes, we're gonna do that. I like that idea. Yep. I'm Gus, not... Gus, if you're watching, let's make this happen. All right, so there we go. And we could actually make this one orange just to show that someone that it's actually clickable. So let's go and pick our orange. And like you were saying earlier this week several times, the great thing is that we can go in here and actually change that color. We can. Time. That's the beauty of the assets panel. So we're going to, I like kind of pop it up just a little bit there. There you go. We'll make it, you see, you can change Ooh. all of it. Yeah. Now you're just getting crazy. I'm just getting crazy. We'll just leave it at orange for now. So this is going to be create order. Let's just say view all orders, which would be similar to this navigation, but again, we're just kind of playing around here. Sure. So view all shipments. And view upcoming. Then we have create order down here, which kind of goes with that. I think that's good for now. It's looking good. All right. Are we organized before we move on? Let me find out. Definitely make sure you organize those layers. Super helpful. Yeah. And those who are joining us in the chat, let us know what you think about John's design. Is there anything that stands out? Anything you like, you dislike? Let them know. Yeah. You can tell me it's horrible. Yeah. It won't hurt my feelings. So these will probably go in the header. Tim but... says you need more Comic Sans. Oh, let's do that. Or Papyrus? Papyrus is good. There you go. That yeah. that works. Beautiful. Just for Tim. Or, you know, at this point it has to be like that. Yep. There you go. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sidetrack. Need to go back. So now we have the dashboard. We'll just group those and call those dashboard. All right. So now we have the dashboard, we have the actual view, and then the header elements here with the icons. I think that's good. I think that was my checklist there. So let's see. Now we have, oh, that's what I wanted to do. So one other thing here is that you don't really know what page you're on at this point. There's nothing that's really delineating that this is create order besides this button here. Mm. Um, the navigation kind of looks 
the same. It across. does look the same, yeah. Um, you can see the shipment order shipments and upcoming. Yep. Um, you know, it wasn't fully wired frame out, so there was some thought process that could be improved here, but just to help for where we are now, let's go ahead and add some large text up here, of course in Papyrus. Let's go back to SF Pro Display. There you go. So maybe this will work for now. Just to bring a little bit of context. Yeah. And do you around. typically uh, also modify the actual navigation bar at the top to either bold something or change the color or underline or whatever? I try to, generally. Okay. Um, in fact, the one thing I was thinking about doing was just kind of dimming this one out here. Felix says, Comic Sans walks into a bar. The bartender says, we don't serve your type here. Oh. Oh. ba dum boom <laughs> So let me make sure you're spaced out. It looks like something got moved around a little bit at some point. They tried to run away when you changed it to Papyrus. That's probably what it does. Yeah. That makes sense. I would too. Hmm. Do you think uh, James Cameron will change the typeface when whenever Avatar 2 comes out? I don't think Ryan Gosling would be happy with that. I don't think so either. Did Wasn't he on that? Uh, yeah, there was that SNL, SNL skit. skit. Yep. Yeah, that was wonderful. So let me make this gray here. I'm just looking at some extra things that I could kind of improve. I think I'm happy with that for now. So let me go back to my list. How about create page titles? And then we're going to read some symbols as much as possible. All right. Now we're going to get into some additional screens. Let's get into the shipments and upcoming and show how quickly it is to be able to, in a design system, use these cards and other elements to kind of really build something much totally, faster. Yeah. And Bernadette says, when my mom tries to design birthday cards in Word, she uses Comic Sans, and that's how Comic Sans stays alive. There you go. Yeah. Although, fun fact, sort of fun, interesting fact, um, Comic Sans is actually, you know, we give it a lot of hate, but uh, for people with dyslexia, Comic Sans is a very good font because it's not so, you know, What's the word? Uniform? Yes. So yeah. it, every letter is kind of different and playful. So it's a lot easier to read for people who do suffer from dyslexia. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And then there's the actual dyslexia font, I think. Oh, you is there an actual one? one? There's an actual one that someone created. Oh, interesting. To help with that problem. That's pretty cool. So uh, one thing we'll want to use here is this uh, container. We could actually make this container just a reusable style because now we have you know, this container here, this container here, they all have the same border radius, same kind of style <clears throat> in general. Yep. So that's what we prepared there. Now we'll come back over here. I'm gonna make this into shipments. One thing that is super critical for shipments is a map. So Maps are good. Put a cool map yeah, up here. Yeah, gotta know where you're shipping things. So this is gonna be shipments. And our current way of doing things, since we can't override symbols, but it's okay. So okay. soon. soon, soon is that we'll go ahead and just place this in here. Now we have all the styles ready to go. Then we can kind of just unsymbol that, and then we'll can stretch it out. So now we have the actual size. But soon, soon, soon. Can't wait till I don't have to say soon anymore. Now, no. Soon now. I'll be able to stop saying soon. Hey, there you go. Mm. All right. So the shipments probably have a similar table down there. We'll leave that the same for now. We'll just change this to create shipment. Yep. Or we'll do ship order. Simple okay. enough. Simple enough. So I have this nice little map from Snazzy Maps. Snazzy Maps? What is this? <clears throat> Snazzy Maps is really great. What? So it's a way to style some of your Google Maps. Since Whoa. Google Maps are so popular, you can actually explore some of these styles and you can search for you know, subtle, and find something that's quite subtle. Snazzy maps. Snazzy maps. I needed a map not too long ago for a project, and oh, I there you go. could have used this. It's, this would be awesome. All right. So you get to, I mean, it's all based on Google Maps, so you have all the data that's available yep. within Google Maps, but what you can do is also, instead of just creating and editing the JavaScript to change the styles and all this, you can actually just download the image, which is super helpful. So you can make the dimensions super wide. What? and make it the size you want. You can drag this around, zoom out. What is happening? You see how things change to different zoom levels, yeah. which is cool. They need to make a plugin for Adobe XD. Oh. That'd be cool. Plugins? Oh, there's a plugin section. 
I, I a WordPress it. plugin. WordPress, okay. Snazzy info window. I'm gonna, okay, I'm so gonna hit them up on Twitter to see if they want to yeah. do an XD plugin. That would be cool. That would be cool. So you can even do the scale factor as well, since we're working on retina designs now. Hmm. Super helpful. You can download the image. So I went ahead and downloaded one, and we'll use that. This is the one I like that kind of fit in the style a bit. Hmm. So Alex is saying, can XD be used to make websites without code? By default, no. Um, mainly because the, the transition between design and code is very difficult to get right. But there are a bunch of plugins within XD right now, I believe. Um, Yotako, I think, is one of them, and also Web Export might be another. And there are f uh, several others mm. that try to make that transition. Again, it's very difficult, especially when you're designing for different screens and so on and so forth. But try the plugins and see if those help a little bit. But by default and natively, not at the moment. Gotcha. Maybe one day. Going back to the days of Dreamweaver and the sorts. Yeah, Dreamweaver, Muse. Mm -hmm. I liked Muse. I never got to try Muse that much. It was good. It's basically exactly what Alex is talking about. You can design and then code is oh, um, cool. outputted. But, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's tricky. Squeeze page title there. So we'll just go ahead and duplicate that as well. All right, now we have a map. It might be helpful in this It's a snazzy map. It's a snazzy map. It's not just a normal map. So now we can kind of start thinking about what we want that interface to look like. We'll have, we're in San Francisco, so we're gonna be shipping from San Francisco. Okay. It's my first time in San Francisco. It's, Is it really? Yeah. Oh, welcome. What's been your experience like? Be honest. A big city. It is a big city. It's a big city. Yeah. I mean, you've lived in Orlando, so it's it's not Orlando-like. Right. I mean, it's not, you know, it's different, but yeah. I like it. It's, uh, it's okay. I live in, <laughs> I live, and you're not from San Francisco. I'm not. No. I don't know if you want to be sharing that, though. Um, and the, uh, coming from Mobile, Alabama, middle of nowhere, you know. It's, it's very It's very different. flat yeah. and rural, which is which is great because yeah. it's slow. But yeah, I've lived in not not there, but you know I've lived in uh, you know, small suburbs outside mm -hmm. of Toronto, and I've lived in small suburbs in Colorado. So I'm kind of ah, used to the, the small city. You know, everyone knows each other type yes. thing. Yeah. And then you come into a big city like Los Angeles or San Francisco, and it's just like there's massive buildings everywhere. Yep. There's people all over the place. It's very different. Some people love it. I know some people swear by New York City, right? Yes, it's true. It's just not for me. Interesting. Yeah, I like the small cities where your neighbors are friendly. You can go and ask for sugar. Well, come visit, <laughs> come visit Mobile anytime you want to. I may one day. It's down here. So we're gonna ship something Mobile while we're talking about it. All right, what are we shipping? Let's see, what we got? We have notebooks and pencils and postcards and a desk mat, a shirt, a house plant. Is it a snazzy desk mat? Yes. Oh, it's a map, you said. Desk no. map. There you we go. You should change it to map. <laughs> oh, a desk map. A snazzy desk map. So the um, the point of origin is San Francisco. It's a bit larger. It's going to be orange. So maybe we make the, I'm sorry, the, the point of origin and the point of destination will probably be something like a light purple. Yeah. <clears throat> Just to make it different. You know, you have smaller as well. Mm -hmm. And would you want some sort of a... Um, a guide. I yes. Forget the word. There's a word. I know the word, but I don't know the word. A little uh, legend. Line. Not a legend. Oh, a legend. Yes. To tell people, exactly. assuming they don't know yes. what what the orange and the blue is. There's a word for that. I think it was legend, isn't it? That's what I call it. It might be legend. Yeah. I think there's another word. Interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll do mobile. This one is San Francisco. And let's go ahead and uh, let's say it's like you know. Something that's really popular is these kind of lines here. Fancy. So what we could do. Kevin Lee is in the house. Hey, Kevin. Kevin, hey. Hey. Said that weird. <laughs> it's your southern accent. Coming yeah, out. that's probably what it is. So we're going to make this one the purple. And since it's not working well with the assets right now, I'm going to just pop it in here so I can use it. Boop. Oh, because it's a border. 
Yes. What you can do from the assets panel, if you right click on the color, you can apply it as a border. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. There we go. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cool. I would like to see some sort of a shortcut so you can hold down, let's say, shift and click on a color oh, and apply cool. as a border. Yeah. But for now, you can right click. Let's do, in fact, let's just do this. Let's see what the black looks like. And then we're going to kind of knock it down just a little bit. And Samantha says, it is a legend, but not John. John Legend. Ah, yeah. hey, that's a good one. That, is a good that one, one took me a second. So let's say this one's going to go over to London. Although it could be John Legend shipment. He could be shipping something to Mobile Alabama. <laughs> Never know. London. I don't know if that's exactly where London is, but we'll, I know it's in that. It's around there. That, that little specific. I was there once. It's a nice place. Cool. I want to go there too. Yeah, it's, I like London. So let's make this larger. We're going to rotate it. Since we already have the curve, might as well just kind of reuse some of this shapes. Kind of reposition this as well. Too far? Too far, almost. Yeah, that works. Nice job. All right, so kind of hot at blending in a bit too much. So we're going to pop this back up. Let's just try some different colors here. Let's do purple. And I want to try something here. We're going to have two different types of shipments. Oh boy. Now you're getting fancy. I'm going to have a shipment that is pending or that it's about to ship. And then we have one that has shipped. We get really fancy with this, but I don't know if we need to get too fancy mm. or snazzy. You can also play around with the um, adding like border dashes and yes. gaps and things like that. Let's make that a little shorter, like that, and then round those corners. Mm. Okay. We'll fill this one as kind of a grayish. You know what? Let's do this since it's going to be pending order. Let's make this gray. That works. Now we're going to make this one orange. Oops. Wrong one. Apply as border. That's helpful. I'm glad yeah. you pointed that out. So that works for now. We'll keep that. And of course, we could actually just duplicate these and have tons of different shipments going everywhere because we have a lot, but we're not right. going to spend too much time there. All right. So now we're going to need that legend that we were talking about. Let's duplicate these items and bring them down here so that they kind of match. And then we'll use... Ooh, Garafi is saying, what about making the circle, which is about to ship, just a border, a thick one without fill? So I guess that would be the pending, possibly? This one right here? Yeah, that could, might be what he's talking about. So Let's no fill it. and a border. I like it. That could work. It's got a nice touch of style. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do it. Thank you. Thanks for the suggestion. Kevin just realized that this is a shipping product instead of a travel app. So he was saying before he wants to ah. travel all over. I mean, we can ship you all over, Kevin. Just put you in a <laughs> box, you go to Mobile, Alabama. Mobile. <laughs> Mobile. So is there a way to copy styles? Yes. Just copy. Just copy. Ah. Command C. And then uh, if you right click, Paste appearance or Command Shift V. There you go. Oh yeah. The See, more you know. It's great having the XD Evangelist right next to you. I know, right? I know all the things. <laughs> Although I have to be careful because I know a little bit too much, so I know okay. things that are coming in future builds. You have to kind of check and I have to mind. make sure that I have to think of, think of it through for a second. Does yes. that exist currently in the build that you're using? Can I say what? What can I say? And what can't I say? Oh, ah. That's, mm. that's not a fun problem to have. No, it's not. Surprisingly, I haven't slipped yet. Ooh. Yet. Yet. <laughs> so like that. And just right click and, and press the Make Website button. Oops. Oh, where's that one? <laughs> Oops, doesn't exist. <laughs> so let's say that's kind of where the legend is going to be since we have, you know, an open swath of ocean over here. Except for the Maldives. Are those the Maldives? Oh, that's Hawaii up here. 
I'm gonna add some labels here. So this is point of origin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and just do this. We'll line them up later. Point of, or we'll just call this destination. And then we'll have shipping order. That's one, I'm typing it and I just trust my fingers that this it's is- It's there. It's there. I see a bit of it. A bit of it. So this one, this dotted line is going to be pending shipment. So let's see how good, how well we did there. How good. Oh, we did it. There we go. We, as in every one of us, helped me type. Yeah, I did a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Make website button. New feature in XD, yes. <laughs> All right, let's make this one black and knock it out of it. It just kind of helps. We'll leave it for now. Yeah, it, it works. works. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> oh, I think yep. we did. <laughs> All right, so now we have San Francisco Mobile. We have solid line. And we'll have dotted line. And this is going to be origin dot and destination dot. We're going to have the labels. And now we have a legend. There we go. There's the map. We have San Francisco. We'll do, we'll just kind of rename these origin, destination, mobile. Destination London. We have pending line and then shipped line. So organized. That like helps. the Marie Kondo of XT. Oh, that's a that's big shoes to fill. Yeah. Or small shoes to fill. Probably small. Physically, yes. All right, so there's our map. So now we have a map, view, and a header. Look how clean that looks in that layers panel. That's a cute layers panel. Thank you. I take pride in my layers panel sometimes. Yeah. So that's for the shipments there. I think that was, let me see if I had anything else I wanted to do there. Yeah. Shipments while location. you're looking at your yeah. checklist, for those who are taking part in today's portfolio review or who, who those who want your portfolio reviewed, there's about 30 right there, 36 minutes left. Ooh. So get those links in and then uh, we'll take a look at some of those later. Cool. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and make an actual panel for shipping stuff. We could do the upcoming, but. Wait, Devin, is that real? The Marie Kondo XD plugin organizes and labels all, no, it's probably not real. Oh, that but would that be awesome. That should be real. There is a plugin called Rename It, which does something like that, but it doesn't really organize. It just basically, if you select a bunch of objects, it can rename it based on um, some specifications you put in there. Okay, I yeah, want it. It's super helpful. Actually, rename it. The plugin uh, was used by Agnes, who put together. I'm gonna try to find because I don't know if you've seen this. Hmm. What was her last name? Agnes. Something or other. That's a good last name. Yeah. Something or other. She does frequent the chat from time to time. So Agnes, if you are in here lurking away, <laughs> let me know. Hidden in the corner, spying on everyone. Yeah. She made this incredible animation using Adobe XD. Oh, I need to find it. Find it. I will find it. I'm working on these links here. This link, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start kind of prototyping some of this. So we have the orders, that's gonna go here. We have the shipment, shipment link two, will go to the shipments page. Tap, I'm gonna do a none transition. We were talking about that yesterday, like having Quick transition since it's typically what happens. Go back to orders for that. None. There we go. Let's just see if that works well. Oops. I found it. There we go. Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> All right. Let me bring this up. Boop. All right. So this was created by Agnes. Very cool. Um, Smat? Some, I don't know. Last. Oh, there she is. Agnes. She is here. Um, this was created in Adobe XD. Really? Yeah, so what she did from my understanding is, and you can also see it on Behance, um, she created these amazing vector illustrations in Illustrator. 
Okay. And because you can import Illustrator files into XD, she imported them as uh, separate artboards. Okay. And then she used the rename it plugin to basically make sure all the layer names are up to date. Okay. And she just used auto animate, dragged some wires, and then it did it. Very cool. Yeah. And I know for a fact that that would transition pretty well to code using something called GreenSock. Oh, re would yeah. it really? Mm -hmm. That would be cool to see. So that's a really great prototype. Yeah, it's cool. really cool. Rename it. That's going to be a good tool. Yeah. Because then you can do that type of stuff with it. It's pretty fancy. All right. So we kind of just prototyped this here. Wanted to make sure that it worked. Got shipments and we got orders. And you can see how page name t changes, but everything's kind of similar in mm. the sense of you know, border radiuses and stuff. So yep. something to keep in mind, since we were talking about design systems at the beginning, we're kind of working on this, is that design systems aren't necessarily just components. They're border radiuses. They're, you know, different styles for the actual lines and titles for things. So yeah. it's really great that the assets panel kind of represents that. You have symbols that could be a lot of different things. You have character styles and then colors, which is awesome. So Tim is saying that the Marie Kondo app plugin is real. Is it really? I can't find it in XD, but let me let me grab your link. Okay. I'm gonna Pretty investigate cool. this. I'm gonna start adding a panel here while you're doing that. Okay. So one thing I know I'm gonna need with panels since it fills the whole screen. Oh. Yeah. Tim! Don't click He's on laughing. it. He's laughing right now. Don't click on it. He is cracking up over there. Yeah. I just got Rick rolled live on air. Tim went there. That's what Kevin said. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> it's okay. I'm here with you. I'll stick right. with you through it. Stop laughing, Tim. <laughs> I gotta kick you again. So, um, panels. Since they kind of fill the whole screen, I'm going to need to find out that this viewport height is 670, 768. <clears throat> Help if I could spell and count. But We're designers. We can't do that. That's okay. So this is going to be 768, and we'll just say this is going to be about that big. This is going to be the... Oh, so Robbie is asking if the layer has a similar name or same, the auto animate will work correctly as in smoothly. Yes. So let me show you a very, very simple example. So here's my screen here. Um, on one artboard, I don't probably need this much room. Let me, all right, let me, let me grab a circle here, drag out a circle. I'll just make it red just for the heck of it. Beautiful That's circle. A good color. Yeah, it's great. So I have another artboard and on this one, I'm going to have uh, a, a square, whatever this thing is called. <laughs> See, I can't, I can't. It's We're designers. We're designers. It's we okay. are designers. Now, by default, this is not going to work, right? Because um, if I do this, auto animate, let's do a tap and auto animate. We'll do one second and I press play and I click, it will not work. Mm -hmm. It'll just default to a transition because XD has no idea what's going on, right? So what you have to do is you have to not only name them the same. So if I name this just shape and this one shape, it's still not going to work because XD sees that there's two, two objects with the same name, but they're not the same type. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you have to convert both of them to a path. So object, path, convert to path or command and control eight. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite shortcut. Yeah. So now I have two artboards with two paths that are named exactly the same shape and shape. And now if I press play and I click, Ooh, cool. It does it. So you have to make sure that you not your layer names are not only the same name, or sorry, the layers are not only the same name, but also the same type of layer. So a symbol to a symbol, path to path, that sort of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. So if I saw that the circle, yep. I'm assuming that the points were at different places because it, you know, it stretches and moves a bit. Yeah. If you turn that and it, it, play it again this for a second there, you saw it kind of like goes up to the left. Yeah. If you want it to go out this way, could you rotate the circle a little bit and make it? Which way should I rotate? Let's rotate it left about 45 degrees. 45, oh, I can't see it. Obviously you, you can't see the rotation because it's a circle. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, see yeah. it changes the way that it. So let's rotate a little bit back this way. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Fancy. Yeah. 
So it actually goes based on the points. It okay. does. That's cool. Yeah, and you can add points too. Um, let me add some points to. This is going to probably look kind of strange because there's too many points, but let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. interesting. And if I convert these points into, uh, let's say, curves by just double clicking on them, it should be a little bit more smooth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like it never was there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure your layers have the same name and the same path as well. Cool. Pro tip. Magic. By the pro. Yeah. So knowing that panels kind of, I'm going to show you this just for, um, just so that we can kind of get a sense of where we're going to be going here. Yep. We have this little repeating grid down here. Let's find out where that is. Table. We got the body. So anytime you click on any of these items in the body, we're going to actually kind of go to the panel. So this is going to be destination. Oh, nope. I messed up. Let's go back. Body. We're going to drag this over to the panel. Tap transition as overlay. And this is going to be placed over to the right. We're going to want it to come in from the right side. Let's do this. Boop. And then we'll go animation slide, slide left. And we'll go for about half a second. So um, when I play this and I click on something, you'll see that, well, it should come in. Why is that not coming in? Fail. Fail. Live on Adobe. We got tap, overlay, panel, slide left, ease out. It's placed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. You click on that. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I know why. Because I already removed the style. No, right there's here. nothing on there. There's no fill. So it probably was doing it. Okay. There we go. There we go. Fancy. So I can see that the what I was going to show you is that the, the contrast and things is kind of hard. Yeah. Once you get down to the table, you can't see it that well. So this is what I normally do is create a shape inside here. Make the background transparent, and then I'll add a little bit of a drop shadow. And we'll say that since we want our drop shadow to be 25 pixels, we could actually do a bit more math here, subtract the width by 25, and now that drop shadow should show perfectly there. Mm. See, math is important. Stay in stool. school. School. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You were working like with those. stools yesterday, so that's yes, kinda, that probably that's it. Yeah. But see, now we have a nice little drop shadow there. Yeah, to it looks good. Clean it up a bit. So, this is going to be the actual details. So let's go ahead and kind of map out what we want this to look like. So we're going to have order ID, customer, items, value, and order placed. Probably the most important thing for someone that's on the backside of this is to to see that value. Yep. Um, so we're just going to make that one nice and big up here. So this was 58, 58. Let's see, do I have anything big in here saved? Probably have to go back and add this right here. We'll add this to the character styles. Large orange. And we'll do large purple as well. Large orange. Bam. There you go. Super easy. And then... Wait for Chris Cannon to chime in, because he hates, for some reason, thin fonts. Really? I like them. I like thin fonts. Of course, not in every situation. But. Right. <laughs> value. Order value. We're going to kind of use the same style that we had over here, where mm -hmm. we had this kind of text at the bottom, and then we will copy some of these. Let's go ahead, since we use that once, usually... Another rule that I stick to is I'll make it a symbol if I start reusing something in general. And sometimes it's when I start using something three times. But you can tell I've already used it three times here, and this will be the fourth time. So we're about behind on this, but yeah. that'll be the rule. You got a rule style. There we go. It's a pretty good rule. Hey. Yeah. It's always best to you know make your symbols as early as possible because unlike char colors and character styles, you can't retroactively make something mm -hmm. a symbol across your entire document. Yes, that's true. Yeah. 
That's something that I need to practice a bit more for sure. Mm. Yeah. All right. So now we have order value. Order value, that's going to be the label, value, and then the rule. We have a container. All right. There's that. So we're going to need, let's go, like you just said, you were just talking about it. Oh, but we're going to need to undo it for the size. Soon. Soon. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do another. We're going to do rule wide. So now we have two. We have rule and rule wide. All right. Now we're gonna need something to kind of help separate this section a bit in terms of, oops, the title. Just they know that what they're looking at. Mm. Yeah, Eric, there was I think a small update to XD this morning. I think um, mostly just bug fixes, I believe. But we have a, an update coming not too soon, not too yeah, not too far away. It's almost April. It's almost, what, what month is it? Um, yeah, it's almost April. December. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> so we have customer Grant Marshall. Let's just say that's what this is going to be. Grant Marshall. And he is customer 7,186. It's a good number. Let's go ahead and add, create the main style there. 700 ID number. Let's just say that's a good title for now. I'm gonna put this over here because we're gonna need some space on the right side for a close action. Let's go ahead and add that here. And we're gonna to wanna to use that gray style that we used for the Chevron just to keep things similar. Use that design system, kind of a thought process there. And we had a plus, but I think I got rid of that. So let's go back and let's just add a little Little X here. And then we'll convert this into a symbol so we can use that as well in the future if we need to. That'd be helpful, yeah. Bam. Okay, we got the, the X container. Let's just make sure this is nice and centered. Looks like it's a bit too, one pixel too high and too wide just to be centered. That works. It's gotta be pixel perfect. Pixel perfect. Mm -hmm. We're working on retina screens, but it still is a thing. Yeah. One pixel can definitely throw things off. All right. So there we have that. Let's go ahead and make that a symbol. Container and icon. This is going to be a close. Like over here, keep things organized. Close icon. All right. So let's just see what this looks like in context. Might be a little bit large, but we'll see. Uh, let's go to prototype. I'm going to wire up that X here just to make sure. We'll just do it on one chance. Let's just see what goes there. Go to Grant Marshall. There you go. Perfect. Looks good. So it looks like in context of things here, the text, I mean, this fits, stands out really well. Yeah. Um, we could actually probably add a little container around here. A darker container would help separate these values a bit because right now the title and this label feel a bit the same. So let's go back over here. And what are you planning for below that, the uh, value? This will be a lot of extra data that we can't see here. Oh, okay. So uh, we might need like order weight or something mm -hmm. if that applies or um, we've got order placed. We could even add the destination. We could link to a shipment if we needed to from here. Yeah. So this is kind of like a bit more details of things that we need. But let's go ahead. I want to add a different kind of, let's get our prototype. We're going to add that container style right here. Just so we have a good base for things. We're going to un ungroup that. Just kind of remove it from the symbols, and then we'll go ahead and add a basic color just so we can see it. I think something like this might help. We might need it a bit lighter just so that orange stands out a bit. Again, we'll need to check the, the contrast on that. Yep. 
I got about 20 minutes left before we start diving into cool. some portfolios. So if you haven't submitted yours yet, definitely do that. So we can, uh, you know, the amazing moderators can choose some. So let's check this. Oh, is that like a little blue or is that a gray? It's like a, a, a light blue gray. So okay, we got, got F2, it. F3, F5. Yeah. Let's add, let's move just a little bit. There you go. F2, F3, F4. Let's check that contrast. Now, what, didn't we do this here? We did it in the plug-in. Stark, check contrast. Failing. Oh, no. So, is my question is, is the orange failing on white even? Let's go to plug-in, Stark, check contrast. It is. So, knowing that, now that we have the orange primary set to that, we can actually just kind of darken it up a little bit. Let's check the contrast on that again. Plug in, start, check contrast. Oh, oh almost. Almost. Edit. Let's maybe make it just a little bit more red. And darken it up a little bit more. It's very important to do the check contrast because even the screen that we're looking at is quite different than the one that I'm oh, working on. Oh, it is, yeah. yeah. Looking here, it's it's very bright here, and the screen in front of us is a little Interesting. darker. Interesting. Yeah. Let, let me check my other one. Let's just see if we got white, and then we're going to have this orange. See, it, fail, it passes over here. But I guess that's the A pl AA+. Plus. Let's check. Sorry, getting a little nerdy here. <laughs> but this isn't very important. AA+, plus, AA. normal text. So it's good for large text, and this is large text. Right. Um, so you might be okay. Might be okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we can always change that in code later if we need to. So I noticed that this orange isn't changing though, so we're gonna go ahead and update that one. Badge, go container. I have to find the original one. Edit source document. Oh, that's right. So, because it's a linked library, I had this, which I set up for all my oh, Adobe things. Oh, yeah, so it's linked to so another document. So it's linked document. to this one. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll go ahead and undo that one and create a new one in this document. Badge. So there's our badge. There Here's the linked badge. Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and edit this one. Make that orange. There Perfect. you go. Easy enough. We need to do, make it this one the same as well. Can you replace it? Yeah, I think you can. You Just, can, you can, but, but because it is linked, you, you can't do this. You have to unlink oh, it first. interesting, okay. And then you can replace it. Okay, let's do that. Unlink. Just ungroup that. And then you're saying do this? If it was a symbol. So if you make that one a symbol, then you can. Oh, okay. Yeah, now you should be able to just drag it in. Now with this darker badge. Oh. Anyway, we'll just do this for time's sake here. User error. That works too. There you go. So now we have order value in this little area over here. Let's go ahead and check that again. I'm sure that this probably is not good enough, but I'd like to check. Check contrast. We're at large text can also be 24 pixels. So large text, and I think we're above 24. Oh yeah, we're at 65. Yeah. So I think that should work. Yeah, it should be fine. We'll do that. All right, let's go back to rule. Let's add a rule here. Get all my layers, make sure I have all this organized. Did I get it in there? Oh, it's because I have something selected, isn't it? What is going on? Weird. So what then? We'll just go ahead and do this. Hmm. You broke your assets panel. <laughs> we'll make, we're probably going to need it to be darker anyway. Apply as border. Hmm. We'll just do this then. All right. Yeah, we're going to need a little darker anyway, so it's good that we kind of have control over it. Yep. And as a quick reminder, if anyone is watching has questions for John about design or 
freelancing, whatever it might be, definitely throw them in the chat. So we have the order value, we have the order place. Let's go ahead and make the date pop up here as well. Order placed. Would you would you want to put a map on, on a screen like this, a little overlay? Oh, that would be fun, wouldn't mm. it? And that could also link, if you click on the map, you can link that directly to the shipments page. Yep, let's do it. Great idea. So let's see, let's make sure I have that rule in here. We'll custom order value, label. Okay, that's the title. Container. And that is, all right, there we go. We'll just come back to that in a second. We're gonna come up here and make this into the map. Mm. All right, we need snazzy maps again. Snazzy. Oh, yeah. Super snazzy. We're gonna want this one to kind of zoom in where we're gonna be shipping it. Set up the whole map since it's just one shape. Yeah, it was, it was kind of small in that little square yeah. rectangle. All right. You know what, looking at this, I'm, I already can tell I'm gonna wanna do this. Let's just make it that color. That works. All right. Nice. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this over. Should, I don't think we made that in symbols, did we? Just go ahead and That other one right there. There we go. All right, let's place those on the map. We're shipping from San Francisco. It's going to end up in Dallas. There you go. There you go. It changed locations. <laughs> Why not, right? Okay, so this is origin destination Dallas container. Oh, Nils is saying he's using Snazzy Maps for one of his clients now. Very cool. Yeah. I wish I knew that existed. At least you know now. I do know now. I have it bookmarked and ready to check out later. Cool. I got pink maps too, so it's like XD pink. Oh, cool. Fancy. All right. I like the way that looks. Yeah. Let's go ahead and build this over here and we're gonna change that style to, we'll say secondary label, that's good. This will be the actual date. This one was, we'll just say it's the same as this first one over here. 4 7 1927 at, oh, that was a long time ago. 1927, wow. that's a long shipment. <laughs> that's a very long shipment. What would even be in that? And this date hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> so, a uh, time capsule, maybe? Maybe, that'd be cool. It just it sat at the post office for Someone from Dallas is randomly gonna see, receive something from 1927. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something that popped up there that somebody might wanna know about. Uh, I love emojis. I love using emojis a lot. Yeah. There's a little app called Rocket so that it allows you to have, you can pull up these emojis anywhere you want to. Oh, interesting. I love some plugins. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's worth it. It's called Rocket. It's fancy. It seems a little bit more uh, intuitive than, because you can pull up the emoji picker yes. on, on the Mac. I think Control, it's like, command, space. Yeah, that one. Yep. But that one you can just type in. I don't think you can search, can you, in the? I think you can. Oh, maybe you can. It, it tem seem, tends to take a little bit longer to pull up, I think. Oh, you can. Yeah, it's not as, yeah, it's not that great. <laughs> that would look pretty cool, though. All right, so the label and value, got the value. Then we're going to have date and this one's going to be a date so i like label and value so we'll do that and then we'll do price there you go so we've got the price the rule date then we'll come down here yeah tim is saying did you know you can also use emojis to name your layers oh yeah you can do that that's pretty cool and hey dustin welcome All right, so we're gonna need some more details here. We're gonna have items. Might be good to have the items. Items ordered. From 1927. From 1927. 
What would that be? I don't know. Let's what was going on in 1927? Probably Twenties? war of some sort. I mean, smoking was big back then. Yeah. So. Hats. Everyone hats. wore hats. Hats? Hats. Let's say, uh, oop, wrong line is to the left. Let's say hats. Let's also leave this up to the chat. If there was a box coming from 1927, what would be in that box? <laughs> Get some interesting answers here. Yeah. All right. So, something that I didn't think through quite as much, but it would be good to know is that they could probably order more than just one type of item. So right now I have just three notebooks, but oh, what if they true, wanted yeah. notebooks and pencils or right. something else? Mm. So for now, we'll just do notebooks. Again, I, this was, I wanted to spend a bit more time in kind of some high fidelity stuff instead of just wireframing. So we'll just say this was two, a few notebooks. We need that badge that we created. Let's hmm. see here. Something's gotta be happening on my end here. Yeah. Will it drag into another artboard? No. Maybe give XD a restart. Okay, let's do it. Make sure you're saved. Saving. And then, uh, yeah. That happens. Things happen. Unless there's something else going on, but who knows? There you go. Okay. Something weird happened. But That's yeah, it's okay. all good now. Yeah. Turn it off and back on again. Did you restart? Yeah. Yes. All right, where are we? We need that badge about right here. Three notebooks. So Mana is saying a typewriter, and then Tim is saying a piece of paper with a handwritten note on it. Oh. I don't know what that would be. Maybe we'd just say, Hello. never gonna give you up. Never gonna <laughs> let you down. <laughs> I think that would be. Never gonna run around <laughs> and desert you. It happens, it's okay. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna need something else here. Let's think about this. We're gonna need, we're just gonna copy over everything here and then we'll add to it later. Customer name, order, got the items, order item, order placed. So that's everything. Nils is saying, doesn't XD autosave? It does. As long as your document is saved as a cloud document, every five seconds of inactivity, oh, cool. I believe, it does autosave. All right, so what ah, else? I beat Tim. So he was gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> Take you got that, him back. Tim. You got him back. Yeah. You're even. All right. Items ordered, order value, order placed. What else do we need here? Um, shipping to destination. Oh, right. That's, that's kind of important. Dallas, Texas. All right. Is the origin in there somewhere? We can add orange. Yeah, maybe. So we're gonna have this one as destination. I'm gonna duplicate that, pull it down here. You know what? At this point, we could just start doing a repeat grid. There we go. It's gonna be origin of San Francisco. Then, what else do we need? Insurance purchased, sure. Shipment insurance. Yes. Okay, that's good for now. Yeah. I'm gonna go over into prototype and see how this looks now that we have everything set up. All right, Grant Marshall. Very cool. That looks pretty fancy. And I love that the fact that it's an overlay, you can basically use it on any of your other artboards if you do have things that Mm -hmm. require that little slide fact, out menu. We'll do it here as well, just to set that up. Overlay. Slide in from the left. There we go. Let's see how that works. There you go. Fancy. Cool. So I uh, just kind of want to recap here, since again, we're working with design systems. It, yeah. it kind of slides in under the radar when you're working on design systems. Uh, but you have these borders, they're all the same. You have these kind of textiles that are a lot of the same. And those are the things that you're going to want to reuse a lot. Um, and the great thing is that XD makes it kind of natural to do that, stick yeah. to design system. Because now 
what makes it beneficial for a, full, a developer is to see these actual symbols, so they know right. how to build out that that little thing. Yourself. Yeah, and and the neat thing about the assets panel is if you decided later on to change the large purple text across your entire document mm -hmm. to papyrus, mm -hmm. you can very easily do that. So you don't have to go into every single artboard and make those changes. Right. Same with character style or sorry colors, and if you have symbols, you can just swap and replace them. Very cool. Yeah. So it looks like we could actually start trying to make some animations maybe. Let's think about this. What else could we do? We need the upcoming screen. But you know what I'd actually like to do is show how the um, design system can move outside of the app itself sometimes at least. Right. So it could actually move into like just a basic login screen yep. if we wanted to do that. Because I know we have an input style ready to go, I think. I remember doing that. Yep, standard input. Let's go ahead and create a new screen. Duplicate this one, and I'm just like, actually just gonna delete a lot of this. There's Chris. Chris, you were talking about you earlier. It's John who's using a lot of light weighted mm -hmm. fonts. I'd love your his input on that. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have that logo. Let's go ahead and pull that up here. I don't think we're gonna need much of anything else since we're not logged in at the moment. The background, though, is going to need to be that purple. There we go. So, since login screens are pretty standard most of the time, very clean, we'll mm -hmm. go ahead and just center that. Robbie's saying, I'm starting to think Howard might actually like Papyrus. <laughs> Maybe. You're on to me. All right, log in. All right, so let's go ahead and add this container style once again, since we're reusing things. I think it looks good just like that. Tiny little logo. Tiny little one. And that's mm -hmm. it. Or really big one. No, gotta go tiny. <laughs> so I like that. And I also like the size of that kind of login. Just make it very purposeful. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing that I found out is like a lot of times that Somebody might want a logo bigger or something else that you know a client might like that. But it's good to even just make things very purposeful because I like to think about the little light switch or something. A light switch is very small. It's never like a huge thing that you have to right. knock over. So that'd be pretty annoying if light switches were massive. I think my my three year old and five year old would like that. That's but true. I think that was probably where it ends. Yeah. <laughs> so that seems a little too wide. So in fact, let's go ahead and what we've been doing is kind of undoing that container just to be able to edit it. But this is going to need to be uh, a placeholder for their email address. Mm -hmm. This is going to need to be a placeholder for their password. So this is probably going to be the bullets. Like this. All right. So now we have email input. And then we're going to have password input. Then we're going to be able to do just a button here. So that full width button. There you go. Get log in. And then we're going to need some additional labels here. So we're going to use that secondary label. User email. This will be that secondary label, or yeah, we'll do the main label there. Helps it stand out a bit. And then we'll use password. Cool. There you go. Awesome. So once you're finished with this login screen, we're gonna yeah. head up to space. Take a look at some portfolios. Go ahead. I All think right. we're done here. Ready to so. do this? All right, so we're gonna be back in just a second. We're gonna take a look at two portfolios today. And uh, then we'll return to you and wrap things up. Cool. All right. See you soon.
And we're back. Well, I don't know what's going on with John. John uh, had some oh. problems coming up to space. Oh, there we go. Uh, we can breathe. There's always oxygen nice. in here. I thought your head like spun around like the Exorcist when we were up in space. Oh, I should probably not go to space then. No. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take a look at two portfolios. The first one is from Kashish. Kashish. Here we go. So you can look at it there, or yeah, over cool. here, wherever you want. Um, Kashish is a, Kashish is a student from India, and if you are here in the chat, definitely let us know. So overall, um, looking at the you know his Behance section on the on the mm -hmm, left, mm -hmm. right off the bat, I would say definitely expand on your About Me section. Yeah. I always love reading a nice you know, fluffy uh, about me section. Yeah. yeah, I like to learn about someone. Yeah. That's what it's for. Let us know what clients you may have worked with, what you're passionate about, how long you've been designing for, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. What mm -hmm. else do you want to see in there? I think that's good. Okay. Um, I mean, even adding something about a, a pet or something would help, just make it a little bit more personal. Sure, why yeah. not? Sure, why yeah. not? Uh, someone says, are you going to Mars? That'd be nice. I think I couldn't do that. You couldn't do that? Mm -mm. Yeah, it's a long trip. It's a very long Four trip. Four months or something like that? And I don't think you'll come back. That's probably not, no. All right, so what do you want to start with? Let's scroll down. Let's just take a good high level overview of things. Um, how many, you got one, two, you got about 14 different things? Yeah, That's three, great. six, nine, 12, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. 16, yeah. Um, I mean, Behance is great for a ton of different things to add, yeah. but uh, if you really wanted to just look like you set your level apart from everybody else, just having like even four or five very high quality, spending some extra time on those very specific ones might help, but mm -hmm. something to think about. Totally. So, I don't know, let's go to, let's just go to the top one, the one that he's labeled to the top. This one? Yeah. All right. So this looks like uh, prop, propage? Pop Probj? 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 I don't know. Well, your next home is on us. Okay, well that's nice. Yeah. Can they... I, I like a free house. Yeah, really. So it's a mobile app user interface. Okay. okay. Very cool. Yep. Enter into the new era of housing. Interesting. You have my attention. Yes. I wonder how that's different. Oh, prop G. Ah, there you go. Okay, I got it. Prop G. Prop so, G. so I guess if this is the case here, mm -hmm. then this up here is probably a little bit confusing. I would kind of keep that consistent because I had zero idea how that was supposed to, I mm -hmm. still don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but at least this helps a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, it operates as a platform that connects landlords with people renting a property, oh, helping cool. tenants build a credit history rather than having to go through the expensive process time and time again. That's always nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're using cutting edge technology to deliver magical, a magical, Ooh. I like that word, rental experience for you. Very cool. Okay. So I know this wasn't part of the project, but having that bold text next to bold heading, uh, you could actually just improve the contrast there. Just help it become a little bit more readable. Yeah, yeah. definitely. All right. Cool. I'd love to see these images of these phones a bit bigger. Yeah. You've done some great work there. I nice want to. to see it. Yeah. Oh, okay. A little bit of a design system. Cool. Colors, a little bit of a gradient here. I like that. Very cool. All right. I can tell looking at that, even the app screen itself, you're following a few patterns, which is really great. And we talked about the hamburger icon yesterday. Yeah. Um, so it, it might be very beneficial there, depending on how many links they have in the menu. Right. Also, I guess he was featured on Adobe cool. Live before. There you go. There you go. Welcome back. Yeah. Choose who you are. So now you can add another video. There you go. Maybe two videos. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so are you a tenant, owner, or broker? Interesting shape there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess you, I would imagine you slide. Yeah. Or drag. Cool. All right. There you go. I like that. Yeah. I like seeing a lot of different, uh, the, the real work that went into all this. It's yeah. really cool. What are your thoughts on this little curve here? Curve. Yeah. It's very consistent. It's used across the site. That's, uh, that's really great. Uh, I think the border radius, or uh, not the border radius, the border shadow there kind of throws off a little bit. It looks like the the line is blurred out. Yeah. It's kind of fading instead of actually like a sharp line yeah. between the two, but. Yeah, I would say you probably don't need the, the shadow. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, for down here, this these border radiuses, and also the shadows as well, may not be necessary. Mm -hmm. um, the, it's, a, it's a strange, it's like an in-between of like cur super curved and straight. A squircle. 
Yeah, squirk, Squirkle. I like that. Yeah, just little things here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, sign in button. There should probably be a little bit more breathing room at the top and bottom. Again, with the shadows, try to ease up on the shadows. You probably don't yeah. need too, that, that many of them. And these buttons over here, one more thing over there, these little buttons. Uh, I think that if there's, oh, yeah, the, the, shadow, the shadow kind of messes with the text there as well, makes it a little harder to read. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Wireframe, always nice. Thanks for watching. All right. Very good. Yeah, so I, I would say just with a few small tweaks, getting rid of those shadows, mm -hmm. Um, adds, adding some more breathing room, even you know up here where the hamburger menu is, probably a little bit more breathing room. Everything seems a little bit squished. Yeah. But yeah, good job. White space is always difficult. That's one of those things that yeah. anyone that I've talked to is one of those things that is kind of difficult to use. Um, just don't. Yeah. Let's go. For, I saw something about pizza before. Oh, perfect. Just to make myself hungry. Oh, that's a nice branding. The tasty tongue. Tongue. Yeah. Tongue mm -hmm. Restro. Okay. You know, it'd be weird. Uh, I challenge you, Kashish, to do this. Find a stock photo of someone sticking their tongue out and turn that tongue into a pizza. Oh. Do that. <laughs> Tweet it out. <laughs> We'd want to see that, yeah. We'll feature you on Adobe Live again. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder if this was hand done or if it's. Fun. Oh. It look. Mm, I'd say it's probably a font. Yeah. Yeah. But who knows? It could be hand done. Yeah. Someone hand done has yeah. done it. Yeah. Cool. So if this is branding, uh, the color selection is really great. I think that that kind of stands out. You got the. It's kind of McDonald's ish. Yeah. Uh, at least I don't know if in India McDonald's has the same brand colors, but uh, you know red and yellow. But especially just simplifying things. If this is going to be a logo, you want to see what it looks like in a very small size. Right. Um, because this could be quite hard to read if it was very, very small. That's true. That's a good point. And I also like to see it in real world situations. Yes, I do. Um, show me what it looks like on uh, you know, a poster or a, a sign mm -hmm. or a business card yeah. or whatever it might be. There's lots of places you can, you can do this. In a magazine with a tongue sticking out. Turn, turned into pizza. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. I'll just. I'd like to see that. Yeah, could be fun. Uh, what, what do you want to check out next? Oh, let's see. Is there another mobile app that we could look at? I think I saw one of these up here that had some, yeah, some lighter colors there. This one here? Yeah. Yeah. Peace Finder. Peace Finder, okay. That can go in many ways. What is Peace Finder? Let's see. So now that logo, we we're talking about logos a minute ago, that logo is pretty great. It, it can be very visible when it's small and right. still has a bit of character because of it curving up instead of you know, doing the normal teardrop shape. Yep. Yeah. Uh, target audience includes students, youths, and adults. Some students do not want to stay in their school hostels, and some adults stay far away from their offices. Okay. All right. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see what this is all about. Cute Very animation. cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it could be kind of like an Airbnb style thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's like a little toggle. Yeah. Interesting. All right. That's great. More colors, mm -hmm. fonts, mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. What are your thoughts on the um, serif font? It's unique. It is. Yes. Um, I think pairing with those colors definitely makes it stand out, which is good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, serifs and mobile apps can be quite difficult sometimes. It can use, be, yeah. So. And I think it's it's quite a drastic difference from the headline. Yeah. Certainly want to make sure that it kind of complements each other. I don't think those complement super well. Yeah. But. I'm also not seeing it a lot in, in the actual. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think even here it's it's not the serif mm -hmm. font, right? Mm -hmm. Is it? That's probably the, the body font, so the I'm body. not sure what those are. Unless it, we haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah. Yeah, same same um, feedback down here. A little bit more breathing room, especially yeah. if this is, for example, the iPhone 10, which it looks like it might be with the notch at the top. You're not really supposed to put anything down at the bottom where that mm -hmm. um, you know, the home indicator is. So move that stuff up. Give a little bit more breathing room. Yeah. It'll just feel less claustrophobic. Something that I learned that helped me a lot with learning about white space is uh, you want to use white space not as 
something additional, but you want to use it as an element itself. Right. So sometimes it even helps if you made an actual symbol in XD of just white space. It helps mm, you kind of, you know, create structure and you can trick your mind into using it a bit better. Yep. Tools used, XD, Illustrator, awesome. Cool. Great. So let's go ahead and check out. Let's so that was. That one. Boop. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so that was Kashi's portfolio. Let's go ahead and check out Adriano. I've, I think I've Adriano. seen Adriano at some point in either chat or Slack or something or other. Um, so he's from Brazil. Cool. My Uber driver here was from Brazil. Nice. And he's got a little bit about himself. Art director since 2004. It's a long time. Yeah. Based in Brazil. He's worked with clients such as Pepsi. Cool. And M Viv, M Mvev. M Viv. Mvev. A few Whirlpool. others. Whirlpool is good. Yeah. So this is good. Yeah. Definitely yeah. add you know your clients that you've worked with. Maybe add a little bit more, but that's it's good. It's a yeah. good start. Yeah. yeah. All right. What do we look at? I was really drawn to that the black one here. I think it's a okay. trumpet. Yeah. Interesting. Very cool. What is going on? This is interesting. I think that's the, the good thing about this. This is intriguing. Yeah. I'm going to learn more about it. Steel Graph is one of the most significant and traditional print shops in Brazil. In this campaign, we highlight the importance of color for a good print. Oh, cool. Interesting. Whoa. Yeah. What? I don't want to eat it. So that's how important colors is. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. This interesting. is interesting. Yeah. I'm kind of digging this. I'm trying to figure out what the the uh, the labels are. Yeah, I'm not. Oh, is it C M Y K? There you go. Oh, I see it. C M Y. I see it. Interesting. I would almost want these as posters on my wall. Yeah. Maybe not the hamburger one. No, not the hamburger one. No. But this is kind of cool. If I was yeah. a musician, if I I played trumpet in high school, I was terrible at it. But if I was good at it, I might get this as a poster. Yeah. Yeah. It's advertisements and talking to. UI, UX UI guy, so we're just gonna look at it like, cool. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I like it. I would kind of want a little bit more. Um, probably will miss the extreme ironing artboard. <gasps> Is he the one who created the extreme ironing? Oh, so a while oh. back we had a submission mm -hmm. with extreme iron. I didn't know this was a thing. Okay. It's an actual thing. If you go, oh. if you Google extreme ironing, it's a thing. Should I do it? You can do it. It's more or less safe. Um, yeah, I would want a little bit more information about what the premise by. I know it's like the highlighting the importance of color for a good print and things like that, but I would want a little bit more information. But this is really cool. Even the weird looking hamburger. Yeah. I love the, the black and white contrast. It's just, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I mean, something that's applicable for this and various things is case studies are super helpful. Oh yeah, that's right. Because yeah. it gives it gives the content a lot of content to kind of digest and it get into someone's thought process. Yeah. So that would be awesome there, just to get the idea behind that. Totally. I'll let you Let's pick. Let's go for Blue Dog. Yeah. Kind of falls in the theme of what we're doing this week for the Daily Creative Challenge. Cool. And that was him. Yes, I remember the extreme irony. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures here. That's pretty extreme. Yeah. I think the, the challenge was to create a, a landing page for an event. Okay. And uh, Adriano created one for extreme ironing. I had zero idea it was an actual thing. Well, there's there you people, go. yeah. In water with an iron. That's very very safe. Yeah, very safe. So this one, I probably won't be able to understand most of it, but um, Something let's see if we can figure it out. Cellular. cellular. Okay. I wish I knew Portuguese. Yes, me too. I love the illustrations though. I do too. They're very simple. I love yeah. this kind of recent trend of um, you know, very basic illustrations. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Based on very geometric things, it's very cool. Yeah. Bulldog. Blue dog. Blue bulldog. Dog. Yeah. Hey, but it's a bulldog. That's, that's smart. Maybe Adriano will give us a very brief explanation of what we're looking at. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I'm betting it's some type of advertisement since he had done it has Bluetooth. Blue, there you go. I mean, blue, 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 do, blue dog, Bluetooth. Okay. There you go. All right, we're piecing things together. 100 beacons. 700 clients. Oh, there you go. There's English. I'm assuming that maybe yeah. break even. Key accounts. 100,000 downloads. Blue dog. Okay. 
Yeah, I love the uh, illustrations yeah. that you said. The contrast is great. The colors yeah. are great. So it's great. All right, let's do one more. I'm curious, what is this? Hmm. Oh, clothing. All right, Camp cre campaign created for UV Line, first Latin American company to merchandise clothes with solar protection. Oh. Interesting, okay. That'd be helpful in Alabama. Yeah. Very bright sun. Cool. cool. I want you, not the UV. I like there it. There you go. Yeah. I like seeing this in context. I do too. That's very helpful. This is really cool with the blurred background, this, just this in focus. It really, yeah. you know, focuses your mm -hmm. eye on just this. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, that is the presentation for a project, Blue Dog. It's a beacon system for companies. Okay, got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah, something that might be helpful is, I mean, you're on the, you're on the internet here and we're super, you're getting a lot of exposure here. Something in English just to help kind of clarify some of that would be super helpful because I'd love to yeah. see more of your work. I'm very interested in it for sure. Yeah. Let's do one more quickly. We'll do this one. Kanguru. All right. Pregnancy tracker app that enables women em women empowerment, providing an accurate and reliable information to help them take decisions during pregnancy. That's very cool. All right. So that's you did what I, I just said a minute ago. Yeah. Explaining it perfectly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like these, um, this area on the side here. Yeah. Where it's just like blocks of text yeah. with like backgrounds. It's neat. Onboarding. Oh, very great. Yeah, this is, it's a nice way of displaying all the cards that are, instead of having a user having to like swipe between right. them, they're just all there kind of extending off off the phone. Yeah, and I like that button style up there. It has a little kind of oh, the it does. border separated from it. It yeah. just makes it a little unique. That's cool. That's neat. These were cool. When my wife was pregnant, we, we were tracking the whole pregnancy here, mm -hmm. and you know, comparing the baby to like fruits yes. and, and nuts and squashes and things like that. It was. It was a fun process. And the fact that these sort of apps exist now to really help you throughout the process yes. is, is nice. Yep. It looks like the UX would be really great too. You, yeah. There's plenty of arrows and different colors so you, you can kind of know what's clickable, what's not. Yeah. It's very simple, minimalistic. Yeah. It's also very fun. He's making sure that there's nothing down here, which is good. Yeah, and one thing that I'm noticing, similar to what you just saying there with the bottom space, is probably there, there you go. go. Um, up at the top, though, you see how the the menu bar is a little lower. I'm wondering if that was purposeful to be able to do that thumb reach, oh, or maybe. if that was just you know how the design went. But maybe if not, it might be worth kind of putting it back up there just to make it a little more similar. Yeah, because it's an interesting to think about. Um, the majority of users on this app will probably be women. Yeah, that's true. And many of them have smaller hands. Yeah. So you want to make sure that a lot of this stuff is, especially if they're, you know, they're pregnant, they probably don't have a lot of reachability because <laughs> they're, you know. Right, right. They're occupied that's taking good. care of a baby. And that's a good thing to think about just when yeah. you're designing anything is the user who's going to be using it in their, their case. Yep. Series of tools to monitor pregnancy. Hmm. Yep. Oh, I love that. I've always done that too. The the color on the left of a card, like that, like mm. where you see the blue, purple, and yellow. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Ah, oh, very nice. I'm assuming that's for contraction. Yep, that's contractions. Yeah. Right. Contraction timer. Mm-hmm. And again, he's got the little uh, little border going on there. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's fun. Yeah, great job being consistent with these buttons too. You yeah. kind of bring that little border in and sh yep. shift it over a little bit. Risk form. Clarify their doubts directly to the medical team. That's always nice. Mm hmm This is really in depth. Yeah, this is great. This yeah. is really great. I'd, pu I'd put one of these up near the top of your list there, so it's one of the first things people see. Yeah. I wonder if this is an actual app. If, mm -hmm. it, if not, it should probably exist. What was it called again? Uh, Kanguru. Yeah. Adriana, let us know if this is was desi designed for an actual client or um, if this was just a, a personal project or whatever it might be. 
Looks like it is. Oh, there you go. Can Guru. Nice. It's like it changed a little bit, but it's still yeah. got that art direction, which is very cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right, great job, um, Kashish and Adriano. Let's yeah. hop back over to your screen to okay. finish up. We got about uh, you know four minutes left. Yeah. Cool. You can kind of wrap up what you did over the last few days. If you want to do any last minute touches, you can yeah. do that. I'd actually like to just kind of finish mocking this up here and sure. get this uh, login finished up. So we had a label, we had the input, and we had a button here. Something that's uh, often used is a forget password link. Oh, yes. I always forget my password. I do too. You know what the worst thing is? When you forget your password, you're trying to put in your password, you forget the password, you gotta reset your password, get the links and everything, then you type in a new password and it says you can't use the old password. Yes. I've I've been there before. Many times. Or you reset the password successfully, and you go to use the password and it says incorrect password. What? What is happening? <laughs> Passwords are useless. So that, that works for now. And let's just say that you know you click on this and um, something that's really helpful, I just I like it, is when you're kind of welcomed into the app with an animation. Yeah. Or some type of transition. So we'll do a transition there. Uh, did I Link that from the, let's link it from the button instead. Because that's the actual thing that'll happen. We're going to delete. That makes sense. Delete. So Adriano was saying oh. the, um, it's real. It was a study for this app. The current app is very different than that one. Gotcha. Well, you tricked me. Yeah, you did a great job. So we'll do, um, let's push up. Let's just see what that looks like. And do, let's do one second. No, let's do three quarters of a second. And ease out. All right. You come to the app, you log in. Oh, that was a forget password. I'm sure a lot of y'all saw that happening. <laughs> no, no, don't do this. Forgot about. Oh, whatever. Yep. That'll happen. So, is there a way to remove? No, oh, I'll just do Command C. All right, let's do it again. Transition, push up. We'll do. Seven, five seconds. All right. Let's just see what that looks like. We'll get a good overview of what it looks like. There you go. Nice. And then we can see the panel come in, and then we can go to shipments, and we can scroll down and see a shipment, where it's going. And we'll go back to the orders there. Pretty, pretty standard, but the good thing is that we've gotten a lot of symbols created there. We've got buttons, we've got borders, we've got text and stuff, and that's something that you certainly want to keep in mind. Of course, yeah. On stuff, so. Looking good. Nice cool. job. Thanks. So uh, we can pop back into the other things and just show some of what we were working on earlier. Earlier this week, we had this little Balsa app. Um, it's good to come back a day later and see what you think about these animations. Yeah, I, I love the, uh, and you mentioned it yesterday, the browse projects and things like that. Like yes. The text. But other than that, I love the animations. Things are looking really nice. Let's go ahead and, I mean, I could do that real quick. It won't take, but just a few seconds. You have less than a minute. Oh, I could do it. I can do it. <laughs> go, go, go. Okay, let's see. Where am and I? And hey, everyone who's just, Sam Anderson. We, uh, Sam, you had lunch with Sam, right? Yes. Yeah, hey, you Sam. Met Sam. One of the uh, great designers on Adobe XD. And Huxel is in the house. S H P. Oh, am I going to get there? I'm going to be able to make it. Go, go, go. And for everyone just joining, definitely stick around because we've got Camille and Melody coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm getting there. Go, go, go. Oh. There we go. Bam. Did it. Beautiful. Under All righty. And that will wrap it up for day three. Cool. You have fun? I had a blast. Yeah, that was yeah, fun. That was great. Awesome. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. Make sure to go follow. Where can people follow you? Uh, I'm on Twitter. That's pretty, pretty much my primary place. It's right. Barrier Wilson. Barrier Wilson. Great. Make sure to follow him there. And stay tuned for Melody and Camille coming up in just a few minutes. We'll see you all later. Bye.
Thank you.